Welcome back to Africa 54. What happens when employment dreams turn into nightmares? Tonight we begin a two-part series on the plight of Africans and others who go abroad to find work and a new life. Here's Africa 54's Ndemea Kemokaleli with our report. Welcome, Demi. Well, thank you, Vincent. Poverty and conflict in such places as Somalia, Iraq and Syria have forced millions of people to seek new lives in Europe and parts of the Arab world. But now thousands of Africans and other foreign workers are leaving Saudi Arabia as authorities crack down on illegal immigrants. Analysts say the expulsions are aimed at improving employment for Saudis who have a jobless rate of 12 percent. Human rights groups say the migrants find themselves caught between the police and abusive employers. Henry Ridgewell reports for VOA. Tens of thousands of Yemenis are among the foreign workers expelled by Saudi Arabia. This convoy arrived back home Wednesday, the latest in an exodus of around 65,000 Yemenis since the crackdown began. Among them was Ahmed Amin. He says Yemenis are being especially targeted. It is for kicking out Yemenis in particular. If you correct your visa status, you can't work. Your work only pays enough to cover your employer's sponsorship costs. You can't pay to the labor office, passports authority, and everything else from your salary. Aid workers with the International Organization for Migration say the returnees are in bad shape. Most of the cases that arrive uh, are quite dehydrated. Uh, this is uh, due to the fact that uh, some of them have been in the detention center for some time. There are an estimated 9 million foreign workers in Saudi Arabia. Authorities began the expulsions earlier this month after giving foreign workers seven months to rectify problems with their visas. Thousands of workers left voluntarily. Clashes broke out between migrants and police in poorer parts of the capital, Riyadh. At least three people were killed. The crackdown should be seen in the context of the Arab uprisings that began in 2010, says Jane Kininmont at London-based Chatham House. The response of the Gulf governments has been to see the protests around the region as partly a response to economic problems, particularly a shortage of jobs for youth. So their policy response has tended to be uh, spending more money, increasing public sector jobs and also trying to get more citizens into the workforce which tends to be at the expense of expatriates. Many foreign workers find themselves unable to leave, says Adam Kugel of Human Rights Watch who spoke to VOA via Skype. You, know, you might ask, well, you know, if the situation is so bad, why don't workers just leave the country? And the problem is they can't. Uh, you know, to leave the country, they have to procure an exit visa signed by their legal employer, uh, which can be very difficult. They make it almost impossible for workers to escape conditions of abuse without breaking the law. Employers will struggle to replace the foreign workers, says Jane Kinnamont of Chatham House. Some of them have skills and some would argue in menial jobs, at least a work ethic that a lot of wealthier Saudis don't have. Another issue though is pay. Employers find that they can pay migrants, especially illegal migrants, very low wages. The crackdown comes as human rights groups warn of widespread abuse of migrant workers in the construction sector in neighbouring Qatar, which is building facilities to host the 2022 FIFA World Cup. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. On Tuesday, that's tomorrow, we'll look at the plight of migrants in Qatar who are working to building stadiums and venues for the 2022 World Cup.